Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, ANN flies the Delta Hawk diesel. Kite Magnetic shows off E-Hawk trainer aircraft. Pulse Jets back in style. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. ANN flies the Delta Hawk diesel. ANN had an exceptional opportunity this week with a chance to get a little operational experience flying an aircraft equipped with the Delta Hawk DHK-180 aviation diesel engine. The experience was fascinating, and keep in mind that the aircraft we flew was an experimental test vehicle with a prototype engine in an airplane that was normally equipped with 30 more horsepower than what was listed for the DHK-180. The startup was interesting, pretty much revolving around allowing the glow plugs about 10 seconds to fire up and be ready to complete the start process, which requires a little experience with how to handle the throttle. Though the overall experience is less difficult than a hot start in an IO540 or IO550, there is still a slight low amplitude, high frequency vibe in idle, but it all but disappears with power application and cruise operation is surprisingly smooth. And for 30 horsepower less than the engine it replaced, the DHK-180 pushed an elder Gen 1 SR-20 along at over 140 knots with about 75% power. The flight down from Racine, Wisconsin the day before covered a total of 818 nautical miles at an average 148 knots true airspeed and a total fuel burn of 45 gallons of Jet A nonstop. Pretty impressive. After the break, FAA promotes new budget after attacking BizAv. For 15 years, the Aero News Network has provided live coverage of the annual Aircraft Electronics Association Convention and Trade Show, and we are pleased to do so again this year. Join us March 19th at 8.30 a.m. Central for the AEA opening session and exciting new product introductions, and then again on March 20th and 21st for in-depth interviews with the newsmakers in the avionics industry, live from the exhibit hall floor at airborne-live.net. Flying is my entire life. It's all that I've ever known. I've relied on Hartzell propellers since about 1995. Hartzell means much more than a propeller. It's a relationship. When you hear the phrase, built on honor, they care about us as pilots, they care about our community, and they care about the product they build. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. FAA promotes new budget after attacking BizAv. After attacking business aviation at the State of the Union address, the Biden administration is crowing about the new FAA budget, which it doesn't feel that BizAv or GA for that matter is paying enough. The fiscal year 2025 budget request to Congress will reportedly build on the FAA's safety priorities by allowing the agency to hire more air traffic controllers, modernize the nation's infrastructure, and strengthen the agency's safety oversight. UTELSTAT 36D heads to launch site in the belly of a Beluga ST. The Airbus-built UTELSAT 36D geostationary telecommunications satellite has been shipped from Toulouse, France to Sanford, Florida, on board an Airbus Beluga ST. Its next step is the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where it will be launched into orbit aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 later this month. With the advent of the new Beluga XL, based on the larger A330-200 platform, the A300-600 base Beluga ST fleet is now fully available for outsized freight transport services globally. World War II giants unable to meet sun and fun dates. In an update to those looking forward to the upcoming 2024 sun and fun, some bad news will rain on the parade. 
The commemorative Air Force, their stewards and caretakers, found a few more items they need to address to keep the birds airworthy in the midst of their regular winter maintenance. Unfortunately, both the CAF Air Power History Tour B-29 Superfortress Fifi and the B-24 Liberator Diamond Lil need to be grounded for a time in order to keep them in continued airworthy condition. It's on! Drone racing scheduled for 2025 World Games. Our friends at the Federation Aeronautique Internationale have confirmed that drone racing will be featured at the 2025 World Games in Chengdu, China. The event is scheduled for right after Oshkosh 2025, August 7th through 17th. The FAI notes that this follows the earlier debut of drone racing at the 2022 Games in Birmingham, Alabama. Although the venue is currently unknown, the FAI stated that preparations for the next event are already underway, including the selection of 32 drone pilots. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Kite Magnetic shows off Ehawk Trainer Aircraft. CKD Aero has partnered up with Kite Magnetics to create the Dakota Ehawk, the quote, world's most cost-effective two-seat electric aircraft, end quote. The Ehawk is intended to be the first in a lineup of kit aircraft using Kite's KM60 electric engine and running gear. The KM60 is much like an old-school piston engine, offering air-cooled direct-drive propulsion with 60 kilowatts, about 80 horsepower. That makes it a perfect fit for CKD Aero's Dakota, making for a two-seat, high-wing aircraft with all the fueling costs of a golf cart. Some back-of-the-napkin math says that the average flight should burn about $4 worth of electric charge, a much better deal than good old Avgas. For training operators, the Dakota Hawk may need to be released in a tricycle-geared aircraft before they put it into use. That probably isn't too far off from the sound of CKD's plans. At the moment, their catalog includes almost two dozen aircraft models for sale, with plenty of choices to choose from should the KM60 prove ready for real-world use. With an empty weight of 600 pounds and an MG tow of 1,150 pounds, the average gas-powered Dakota sees about 1,200 FPM in climb and 90 to 100 miles per hour at cruise when equipped with an 85 to 100 horsepower engine. And after these messages, Pulse Jets back in style. A special month is coming to Sun and Fun's 50th fly-in celebration. Multi-platinum singer Dylan Scott. Out here living, living my best life, yeah. Dylan Scott with special guest Sarah Evans. Get your tickets now. Be a part of the kickoff celebration for Sun and Fun's 50th fly. Go to flysnf.org. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Pulse Jets back in style. The legendary sound of the old V1 of World War II fame is back, except this time it's powered by an uncrewed, combat-ready UAV. The autonomous aspects of drones have finally caught up to the point where having a super-cheap, simplistic jet engine makes sense. 
North American Wave Engine Corporation got some civilian attention with the publication of its civilian spec pulse jet engines using their J1 engine atop a very familiar silhouette. Their demonstrator cuts a very close approximation of the A-10 Thunderbolt in form, with a very ungainly contraption bolted atop its fuselage. It offers the same tail, wings, and fuselage design seen on the classic ground pounder at a 100-pound gross weight and 20 pounds payload. That's the good old Pulse Jet, resurrected in all its 1940s design glory once again. The J-1 engine demonstrated offers 55 pounds force thrust while only taking up 18 pounds of weight aboard the aircraft. Where it differs quite a bit from the vintage examples of the breed is fuel consumption. Two pounds an hour, much better than the old V-1 buzz bombs used to get. That comes courtesy of the newfangled digital ECUs, keeping everything nicely optimized throughout the flight. Wave sets it's ideal for a, quote, high-speed UAV up to 200 pounds gross weight, end quote. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching!